Hello, and thank you for joining today for this web presentation on combined NanoLens AFM and Bruker 3D microscopes. I'm going to speak about integrated 1000x inspection uh, combining for maximum metrology value. So the, this first presentation slide just gives you an overview of what we'll go through today. And in the first section, as you see there, I'm going to give a brief introduction and talk about a little bit of the administrative details of the webinar. So that's this first piece of the discussion for today. And we'll go through these other elements as we progress through the time, um, where I'll give an overview of the 3D microscopes we offer from here at Bruker, some of their functionality and capability in terms of software and automation and ease of use. Then I'll go into an overview of our NanoLens AFM module, which I, I like to think of it as a 1,000x lens. And then I'll give a defect inspection example, and we can end with a summary and a questions section. So a very brief introduction to who Bruker Nanosurfaces is. Uh, Bruker is a larger analytical instruments corporation a worldwide company with several divisions. And one of those uh, is our nano surfaces division, which offers a, sev a suite of several instruments related to surface metrology and tribology. And um, we have AFM manufacture. We do tribology and mechanical testing systems, which definitely require metrology systems to help quantify the results of the testing that are done. Um, we are, as you see there, one of the only AFM or the only AFM manufacturer in the world which does its own world-class probes nanofab. And we're a leader in innovation with 180 or plus patents and across a range of technologies in stylus, optical metrology, and AFM. Down at the bottom, you just see a, a few pictures of the instruments that we offer. Um, including the tribology mechanical testing tools, uh, atomic force microscopes, 3D optical microscopes, and, and also stylus profilers. Now more specifically, this uh, the webinar presentation today, um, I'm working here from the stylus and optical metrology division or business unit of Bruker Nanosurfaces which we really try to focus on um, manufacturing ex excellence and technology leadership. We're always working to be at the cutting edge of how our tools can best help our industry partners. And um, you can see a picture there from sunny Tucson, Arizona. And so just briefly introduce myself. My name is Matt Novak, and I'm working here uh, in, as I mentioned, the stylus and optical metrology business unit of Bruker Nanosurfaces. Uh, I've been here for over two years now working in this role as an applications development manager uh, and really enjoy this role where I get a chance to explore needs for our systems with industry partners and how we can help solve uh, challenging problems for metrology. I have um, close to 17 years of industry experience in optical engineering, um, fabrication, and metrology. And I earned my PhD while working in, uh, at a private sector company making capital metrology equipment. So who will benefit from this webinar? And I guess I wanted to make it clear what I hope you'll gain from this over the next few slides is I definitely would like to interest people, technicians or engineers or researchers who might be interested in 3D optical microscopes for sure, um, the different automated capabilities that uh, we can offer with our systems I'll highlight here in this discussion uh, today. But the, the key thing is, is um, 3D optical systems can really provide uh, a vast array of information about surfaces or uh, critical dimensions on parts of manufactured pieces or the materials that are being built into a production process. And I think that um, the goal here would be to present this information to show the value of these types of microscope systems for measuring uh, key 
functional performance characteristics or also critical dimension characteristics of those kinds of materials. I also think people that are interested in very high resolution uh, imaging metrology for failure analysis or quality assurance would be interested and would benefit from the materials here as well as people who are interested in or already using both AFMs for imaging and 3D microscopes for, for inspection because I'm going to talk about the combined use of these technologies as well as automation and ease of use for 3D optical inspection and combining the AFM imaging on one platform for things like quality assurance or control, failure analysis or process control. So why 3D optical microscopes? I mean, this is really value delivery for precision applications. And what I mean by that is we, when people are interested in purchasing capital metrology equipment, I, I think of it as an investment protection for your money in terms of the equipment and materials that you need to buy to produce the things that you are producing. Um, it's a way of saving time by helping operators and machinists do the job they have more effectively and more efficiently and also in protects, protects the investment and in productivity in terms of the deployment of capital or reducing rework for example when parts are made incorrectly and need to be changed. And the key thing is that you know the systems that I'm going to talk about today really deliver tremendous value across these elements and I'd like to focus on that and combine that with the high resolution imaging of AFM in a single platform. So it's my goal after the webinar that you will understand these the different values that I'm speaking about for the 3D microscopes uh, and specifically for the first section where I introduce the 3D microscopes I'll talk a lot about um, different automation and ease of use capabilities that are very unique to our systems um, but the, these are key parameters of use that make the systems highly functional and, and easily deployable for many different applications. And then really understanding the value of integrating an AFM capability on this 3D microscope platform for highest resolution metrology applications. And I guess the last administrative uh, piece in this very the brief introductory section of the presentation is at the end of the, the presentation, we provide a survey for these the free webinars that we do because it's our goal to really uh, provide clear presentations that add value for you uh, as our partners. And so if you could spend just 30 seconds filling out the five questions for the survey, I'd really appreciate it, and we here in Bruker would very much appreciate it. Thank you. So now that I've gone through the, the overview details, the in, intro and administrative details, I'm going to spend a little bit of time um, giving an overview of our 3D optical microscopes and you know just general introduction and then some of these advantages in terms of software, automation, and ease of use that I've been speaking about. So first, what, you know, for most people uh, have looked through a microscope and I think that's a, you know, usually a pretty safe assumption when I try to explain quickly about what it is we do here. Um, really just picturing a microscope which is the instrument in the middle of the page there is a tabletop microscope that we have from on offer here from Bruker and this is a special microscope objective use here that allows us to make a 3D image of the area of interest. And that's really the simplest way to think about how these systems provide the images they do. They're, it's a special, uh, it's a microscope itself with, which makes nice images of the sample of interest, but then you can also make use of a very special interferometric objective that is used to gain information about the sample height. And so over on the left-hand side of this sheet, you see a schematic diagram of most of the information or, or the that information there represents what's inside the blue cover on top of the microscope. There's a camera and, and some light sources 
and then a beam splitter and also the special microscope objective which would be the last piece on the turret there looking down at the sample. And those optics and that optical uh, train are scanned vertically so that the sample area of interest is passed through focus. And then the computer system that's attached to this microscope can compute the height information from that focus scan data. And so you get pictures of things like you have on the right over the field of view. You have a not only a, a con contour or a two-dimensional contour, you have also three-dimensional height information. And basically anything that you can get reflected light from, you can make a three-dimensional very accurate measurement of using this type of a microscope system that we offer. So what are the, the values from such a system? I mean, this image, I just like this image because it shows a, a large area of inspection where you can make a three-dimensional image, uh, but it enables metrology for really a, a broad range of applications. For example, on a, a sample where you might have to compute waviness or roughness information or step height information on the, that detail of the flowers that you see from this coin, you can see there are grooves and, and there are some pits and scratches and there are also uh, different steps that you might want to gain metrology about. Um, you might want to understand the, the roughness characteristics of, of this. And so really what these types of 3D microscopes that we offer do is enable uh, high resolution measurement of both you know vertical resolution for the three-dimensional measurement and also uh, a high quality image that can combine to provide really great metrology over a large area. You can see here this is you know a 20 millimeter circle roughly and you can get areas, um, pieces of that, details of that, small fields of view if you would like where you have more details that you might care about and then later on in the presentation I'll explain even at highest resolution when you combine with the nano lens AFM, how you might gain even more insight into the nature of the surfaces you're interested in. So where are these types of systems used? I just, I wanted to spend really briefly, um, th these kinds of systems are ubiquitous in, in a lot of manufacturing and uh, there are life science applications, there's metal fabrication, looking at tool wear, um, there are roughness applications and height applications, there are applications of this kind of information for MEM systems, uh, semiconductor pack, back end packaging, um, for high density interconnect measurements, there are optics applications, materials applications such as uh, friction plates or automotive sensors, these types of things are all um, part of where our systems are employed to help make uh, manufacturing processes or uh, research and development processes uh, more efficient and operate more smoothly. Uh, and so this is just um, to give you an idea that there is really a wide range of, of applications that can be addressed by such a 3D optical microscope. So now, as I mentioned, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the advantages of, of these systems uh, for use in high accuracy metrology. Um, and one of the advantages that we offer is really a, a very a truly universal measurement methodology for those 3D high accuracy measurement images that I just spoke about. Um, we have a measurement mode called VXI that's available on these microscopes that is just recently uh, released to the market and this is a very universal measurement mode which can work equally well for stepped, smooth, or rough surfaces. And This is accomplished by using the complete optical signal that comes from that interference microscope that I spoke about briefly. You have the imaging information which has to do with the intensity and then you also have the phase information that is used to use the co coherence information that is present in the signal from the surface. And the signal uh, that comes back into the system is used by VXI to render the topography by self-sensing whether the surface is smooth or rough. 
then producing the highest quality data on the smoothest surfaces while also reducing noise and artifacts on surfaces that are rough. And because of that, you get, for, for example, here, this image on the right is of a scratch on a, a relatively smooth surface where the S, SA parameter, the average roughness over that 3D area is around 15 nanometers, including the scratch. Um, and you get very fine details uh, about the, the area that you're interested in uh, very easily and very quickly with this type of a system. Some other advantages are these types of microscopes um, offer excellent vertical um, step height measurements. Uh, this big data here just shows a table of magnification 5x and magnification 50x, or very nearly 4.9 and 49.8. Um, these are measurements of a step height, which is around 8.4 microns. And you can see on both columns that the, the measurement of those step height values is extremely repeatable regardless of the magnification. And that is really a key advantage of the kind of systems that we offer. There's both at large fields of view up to you know, a millimeter or you know, two by two millimeter area, which you would get from a 5x magnification roughly to a 50x magnification, which is a, you know, 10 times smaller on a side you know that you can get very highly accurate and highly repeatable numbers from the system either way. And that is a very key advantage to this type of a system as well. So I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, automation and some ease of use features of these types of 3D microscopes. And the reason for that is it will play into the, the application example that I'm going to give with incorporating the, the use of the nano lens later on in the, in the presentation today. So the, the fir one of the first things I'd like to talk about for this ease of use is something that's called multi-grid automation. And so on the right hand side what you see is a picture of the 3D microscope looking down at a wafer and on that wafer I might be interested in several different areas in within each die or, or square rectangular region. Um, and so what I've done is I've shown here, for example, on one die, uh, uh, our automation editor, which is a very simple automation editor representation of that die. You can see the two corners that I've shown there drawn out to the, the corners of that editor box. And then within that editor box, the user is able to do a multiple measurement setup. You can see one, two, and three listed in the box there in that larger uh, square. And that can represent areas on a wafer, as I have here. Or you could have parts with, which are placed within a tray, or multiple parts on uh, multiple trays, even if, if that were of interest. And very easily, simply, and quickly, you can set up multiple different measurement locations, as well as alignment locations, to give different information at different sites within each of those dies or tray regions on your part. And so this is something that the, these types of 3D microscopes that we offer come standard with any of the systems that have automated or actually motorized stages. This kind of an automation can be easily set up uh, by um, the, an operator who is interested in making these kinds of measurements. And these, uh, this will, the reason or the utility of this will become clear as we speak more about the application uh, example later on. Additionally, uh, related to that type of ease of use, I wanted to mention that um, we can also easily achieve an automated alignment using uh, Cognex pattern recognition uh, to find features of interest on the sample that is under inspection on these types of systems. This is a very fast inspection. You can do a bright field image that will make the recipe measurement. Um, I've shown an example off to the right where I just picked a feature with a unique shape that could be located by spiral stitching or looking around in an area of interest where you have nominally uh, that feature should be located and then it would be moved to the center of the field of view and the system automatically remembers the location of that 
as one way one anchor point for the position of the wafer. Another alignment point could then be used to set the D skew of the sample tray or a wafer on the stage. Again, I want to make clear the example here is showing a wafer, uh, but this can be accomplished on a tray of parts or multiple parts for inspection or a lead frame, for example, if there were uh, a grid pattern that wanted to be measured on, you needed to be measured on that type of a sample as well. This is not limited only to, to wafers. This is really an operator independent uh, way of getting the best, most accurate and repeatable, reproducible measurements. Uh, because it really tries to minimize any influence of the operator on how the, the sample is located and then measured. You can teach these patterns uh, inside the soft system software, and it's a to for a totally integrated uh, solution, which, as I mentioned, you can uh, en envision for yourself other ways that this might be useful, but certainly it is uh, a critical functionality that is in use uh, with for our partners in some semi as well as automotive micro machining, MEMS, and other applications. Just wanted to touch on the really the microscope nature of our systems. This really is a way for you to obtain nice images that can show features of interest. But in the center there, you can see as well some some metrology data that are easily obtained just by looking at cross sections to look at peaks and valleys and, and different structures that are available. And this is really a combined imaging and metrology system, these types of 3D microscopes that we offer here from Bruker for sharp imaging and give you fastest time to, to data are some of the key advantages. Additionally, we can customize display and output. Uh, this is just an example of histogram display on the top as well as a three-dimensional um, representation of the surface that was measured. This looks like some sort of a brushed metal. So these data are easily output from these types of microscopes. And then really kind of the last two pieces of this introductory section, the last few pieces of it, where I'm going over the the details of 3D microscopes and before I go into the combined use with the NanoLens AFM for inspection, I want to talk about some of the really key advantages in terms of time to data or how quickly and easily information can be had from these systems. First, so I've broken this up into two sections on the slide. Um, there's really fast image acquisition, which for single measurement locations like you see on the, the left-hand side, um, there's really a few components that come into that. There's the scanner speed, which, and then also, also return scanning, which has to do with returning the position of those moving optics that I mentioned early on in the presentation. Um, and the scanner speed is talking about the vertical scanning speed of over 100 microns uh, per second, which allows you to scan very rapidly over a long range and up to 10 millimeters for these kinds of systems. So those things combined with real-time auto intensity for the, the measurement allows for a very quick, easy acquisition of information for a single measurement location. If you look on the right-hand side in terms of multiple measurement locations, um, we really streamlined into this multiple measurement locations a few different features. There's still the same scanner speed, uh, 100 plus micron scan speed that can be used but as well, there's a tilt adjustment that can be done across a range of measurement locations. For example, down at the bottom, you can see um, what looks like a, a wafer grid, and that could be the main overall grid for the kind of multiple grid automation measurement I explained just on a, a few slides earlier. Um, you also have the advantages of very easy XY automation. You can do scattered positions or wafer grids such as this one with toggle of the cells and rows very simply on and off for measurement. Uh, you can do stitching uh, and use uh, this auto scan return after the data have been acquired for the field of view in question. And then in addition to that, you can do a very high speed autofocus, which can be 
run much faster in terms of the vertical scanning speed to locate the, the surface of the part under test. So all of these things combined together, really um, the two components of, of speed to getting data from the system have to do with image acquisition and then also the data analysis that will be done. So these pieces have to do with the image acquisition and as well, um, that I mentioned briefly, another piece of that image acquisition over a, a large sample setup, there's this automated tip tilt which is a feature that we offer on our 3D microscopes that is a unique capability um, that will allow for the best repeatability, the best reproducibility, and also the fastest time to data by where you have long scans required to get data from the sample. It's very easy to set up and it allows you to have the shortest possible traces of the part that you're looking to inspect. And so what do I mean by that? Um, in if anyone that is listening is familiar with the use of a 3D microscope that's built based on interference technology, you will know that when you're near focus, there is a specific signature that shows the, the tilt of the surface under test. For example, here I've, I've shown on the right-hand side a picture of a wafer with some bumps on it. And you can see the general uh, striping pattern of, from lower left to upper right. And those fringes represent the, the tilt of the surface in a, in a very easy way to the signal that's coming back to the camera in the microscope. And so by setting up a special user control condition for alignment, the system will automatically measure and then adjust the, the tilt of the optics to match the normal direction to the surface or any direction to the surface that's set for the user. And what, why this is useful is if you have a large bowl or a bowed optic or a convex surface or some sort of a, a wafer or a panel that has warp to it, you can minimize the scan lengths you need to follow that surface by first quickly measuring and gaining information about the tilt or the local curvature of the surface and then measuring normal to the surface. That would be true of any type of microscope you might use. They function best when they're pointing normal to the surface. And when you do that automatic tilt, you can see very quickly the system will automatically adjust out and give you less of those uh, tilt fringes that indicate the tilt of the surface. And this can be then, if those bumps that are there are only 30 or 40 microns tall, you can minimize the scan that you need to be only 50 microns long, which might be a half a second for a 100 micron per second scan. Um, so that half a second um, can be a, a much higher time throughput at, than you would have obtained without actually getting automatically normal to the surface if you needed to do a hundred micron scan every time you measured on a, a wafer you would be saving a, a half a second per measurement site which can be significant if you're measuring hundreds of sites on a sample now related to this and this is one of the the last pieces of this um, introductory section is talking about automatic identification of regions and coordinate mapping. Um, one of the other really key advantages that on the systems that we offer from here in Bruker are um, a multiple region analysis, which can allow you to track not only the global XY stage position, but then also the position of different regions within the fields of view that are measured at those different XY positions. So. In this image on the left, you see three bumps that might have been on a, a wafer, or on the right-hand side, you see a via or a pit that, that could have been on a, a print roller or some other uh, electronic uh, package. I'm not even sure of that image, um, what it is. But the, the key here is that the software can automatically identify and uh, log the different positions of these types of features within the field of view and as a function of the stage coordinates on the system stage. So computing different parameters such as roughness or 
the RMS roughness or volume of these types of things can easily be achieved all in one shot. And one image acquisition can give you the information about both the XY coordinates, the log of, of the data for all the different parameters of interest. There are um, thousands of, of analyses that can be employed and looked at for different uh, parameters of interest with these, uh, the systems we offer. And then also looking at the and logging the different data regions and statistics without any operator intervention. So again, um, this is a really key thing. And as we go into the section, the next section of the presentation, where I'm going to speak about how uh, integrating AFM capability onto a 3D microscope, this can become very important for locating and indicating areas of interest, and then going back and actually searching. Uh, and finding those same coordinate areas and making a higher resolution image. So I wanted to touch on that before we went on to the next section. The, again, this comes down to the, the definition of speed or time to data. really has to do with image acquisition, which was the first few slides that I just spoke through on the, um, the way the system gains the image from the surface or gains the image of the surface, surface and makes the representation of the topography. And then the second piece of speed is, is the data analysis, which uh, this type of multiple region automated operator in independent analysis uh, really makes that, uh, at that component of the image process a very fast one and very quick and easy way to get information about the surface that you're interested to have. So again, the last key thing here is remembering um, getting the coordinates uh, is an automatic, easy thing to do, which will lead into, um, as we go through an overview of the NanoLens AFM, which is the, the second component of this discussion that I want to cover today. The, so a thousand X lens and making use of those coordinates will be the last few sections of the, the presentation. So here, this is just a, a picture of one of our 3D microscope systems. This is a benchtop system like I've been talking about. But now you can see on the turret, you have a very small, compact, this 1000x AFM lens, or the nano lens, which is uh, mounted directly on the turret and can be used just like another microscope objective. Uh, and this is really, a, I think, a tremendous value for people who are working in QA or, or, or sorry, failure analysis or also quality assurance um, where something goes wrong with a part or in a process and there's a need for a range of capabilities to assess what that might be. Um, so for looking at the review of defects is one of the things that we'll talk a little bit about. But the key here is, is this is a fully integrated um, setup where the controller and the nano lens itself are very easily connected and integrated to the, the 3D optical microscope platform. Uh, and something that you can set up and have running and getting AFM images in about 30 minutes. So for the NanoLens AFM, why do I keep saying 1000x? And, and I guess that's, I mean, I, I put it in quotes because it's actually, you know, this is something that uh, you can define and have it be what you would like it to be. Um, I say 1,000x because it's, an, it's a nominal way for me to talk about the highest turret magnification that you can get on one of our 3D microscopes. So what I've done just to, to illustrate that is I've shown a block on the left-hand side in green where I'm drawing roughly what our approximate 200x optical field of view will be. And we get that by, we have a 115x objective, uh, and you can have a two times zoom in our 3D optical microscopes. And so that zoom multiplier and the 100x objective give you an effective roughly 200 to 230x magnification, which is a, corresponds to roughly a 25 micron square, 1,000th of an inch on a side. And it's slightly rectangular, but for the purpose of this discussion about magnification, it's easiest to think of it this way. So that approximate 200x field of view at 25 microns on a side 
Um, you can see on the right-hand side, this is a NanoLens AFM image of some patterned sapphire substrate structures. And I've purposefully looked at about a 5 by 5 micron square, which is you know five times uh, further magnification, and hence the 1,000x. And this 1,000x image is very easily achieved by the NanoLens. The, the system can actually go to much smaller scans and, and much higher points per line. Um, but I just, for illustrative purposes, wanted to show uh, why do I mention 1000x. And really, this is a key benefit that I think people who are looking at high magnifications could, could gain from having this capability on board on the, on the system. So what are some of the reasons that we and Bruker feel this is a, a, a big value add for our metrology partners? Um, we really, so we're really the only 3D microscopes in the world where we're having an integrated AFM module, which is operated from within our microscope system software and backed up by we have an extensive worldwide AFM expertise. And that comes back to the very in brief introduction section where I spoke about Bruker Nanosurfaces division and the different uh, inspection systems and, and tools that we offer. One of those tools is uh, the AFM microscope and we have a lot of expertise and a lot of experience working with those kinds of systems so we really think that we have a unique capability to offer this this functionality to our industry partners mm, I think personally this is a an ideal combination for things like defect review or uh, a failure analysis application where you might do a low magnification identification of the defects and then require a high resolution measurement. Um, this is you know, the key benefit of having this 1000x imaging capability on the platform. And it's integrated on the platform. So that capability can save a lot of time in terms of the process of loading and unloading, taking a sample from different measurement instruments or understanding, you know, having different operators who are experts on different instruments. Um, really, the use of this is, is such that it is integrated and straightforward enough to use that someone who is familiar with making high magnification uh, 50 or 100x objective magnification measurements on a 3D microscope can be up and running with this type of a measurement capability in virtually no time. So it really does maximize the operator's productivity. I just wanted to give a brief overview of what the AFM capabilities are. This is um, certainly uh, just thinking of it in terms of a, a, an onboard lens with very high resolution. So you can see it has a, a maximum scan range of about 70 microns. So you can go to a relatively large, even up to 110 microns, if you scan the probe at 45 degrees in the field of view, it can handle a, a relatively large uh, 22 micron Z range. So um, we felt that this was a, a good offering in terms of the types of samples and systems, uh, types of samples that are generally looked at on at high magnifications with our 3D microscopes. You can see some of the other technical details there, but the really one of the a couple of the key things are right at the bottom of this table, which have to do with having a built-in uh, 8x lens, which can allow for um, par focality to the other objectives on, on the system. And that's really a great feature. So you can look at the sample and see the cantilever in the field of view to see where you'll be probing on the surface. And then you also have excellent reproducibility of the position of the AFM cantilever down to about plus or minus 10 microns or a 20 micron range. So these general technical specifications are um, some of the key things about the, the nano lens that make it very easy to use. Um, you get very high uh, Z resolution as well as excellent XY resolution in the, the 1 to 2 nanometer range for the drive resolution. On the right hand side, I'm just showing a very uh, generic picture of the simple cantilever mounting system. This is um, speaking as a non-AFM expert and my background not being in atomic force microscopy. I had uh, no trouble at all figuring out how to easily load and, and install a cantilever on this type of an AFM lens. And as I said, I 
had the system up and running within 30 minutes uh, of getting it out of the box, which I thought was a, a very unique and easy way of integrating this type of system. Some of the features and benefits to the apl applications that we're offering with the NanoLens AFM is re really you can have this uh, PAR-centric AFM to, to the 50x or 100x field of view. It's roughly PAR-centric within about 15 microns. So for an inspection area of a 50x lens, which is maybe 100, 100 microns on a side square, uh, you can be relatively centered re very easily. Um, we have, as I mentioned, the integrated 8x optical objective. And on the right-hand side, you can see uh, an image that we you can go up to 16x magnification because of the zoom optics that are present within the 3D microscopes that we have. So this, this truly is an integration of this nano lens functionality to our Bruker 3D microscopes. So you can easily identify areas of interest and then do inspection via the optical or the AFM capability. And as I mentioned previously, having this onboard AFM really enables the fastest time to lots of data for failure analysis or other uses. So what are some of the applications you might, uh, if you have the power of AFM with a 3D microscope? Um, 3D microscopes, generally the 100x objective or 115x or maybe 150x, depending on the system you have, is about the highest magnification stated on an objective. So this really is, number one, a way of reaching to much higher resolution measurements that are on the turret and accessible just like another objective on the turret. Um, additionally, be, you know, due to the types of uh, samples that we see with our 3D microscopes and using interference techniques, um, you can take advantage of the AFM to help measure very thin films where optical phasing might cause challenges. Additionally, similarly to um, where you have dissimilar materials in the field of view which have different optical phases upon reflection. Uh, different smooth surfaces for semi-wafers or MEMS and other lithography applications. This really does provide a very high resolution look at both laterally and vertically uh, and takes away any of the challenges that might be associated for optical techniques looking at um, those types of, of samples. Uh, and as I mentioned in, um, in the previous section and uh, leading up to this discussion around the nano lens, um, how it can contribute with the 3D optical microscopes. I believe it can really help with a defect review functionality as well because it brings this highest, highest resolution capability to be a, an onboard way of, of verifying the results that are seen by the optical techniques. On the right-hand side here, you just have an example of a, a large field of view on a, on a CD and then looking at that small red square, you and can go in and make an image with the nano lens um, and down to looking at the actual bits on the CD is not a problem at all for this type of, of an imaging AFM capability that we provide with the nano lens AFM. So briefly in this last section I'm going to cover this defect inspection example that I'd like to, to introduce now building on the concepts that we talked about through the previous portions in the presentation. So for a defect or contamination review application, I envision the 3D microscope measurement where you might indicate some areas of interest where you care for a much higher magnification inspection. You could get that through multiple site uh, measurements via an automated run, for example. Uh, you can be logging the, those sites and looking at uh, peak heights or valley, you know, if, if there are pits or scratches that you might care about or be interested in. You could set a parameter to be flagged in the database for when the depth or a peak exceeds a certain number of nanometers, 100 nanometers or 200 nanometers, for example, and log those coordinates, as I mentioned previously. And then the stage that for the 3D microscope can then easily auto-locate those measurement locations. We can export those coordinates in an XY file, which can then be read back into the system to automatically locate the positions for highest resolution inspection. 
And then using this PAR-centric nanolens AFM, you can make images of the sample areas at the highest resolution you need all on the same platform. So the, the sample does not need to be removed and replaced. You can make this type of, a, of an application uh, function very seamlessly all on the same platform. That's just a, a basic overview of what I'm about to talk about. So for the specific application example, I'm going to again show a different wafer. This time I'm looking, looking at an HBLED wafer in process. You can see the dye there on the, on the wafer. And looking at this on a, a 3D microscope and looking at different levels within the LED structure or some other information about this, one, one might care about whether there are uh, some killer defects within the process that are causing a problem. And so each of those dye can be looked at all in one field of view at low magnification. Um, you can identify coordinates uh, and look back on the stage for that specific area of interest and then look with the nano lens to confirm or add additional insight to the detailed structure that you see there. So here's just one example. Um, this in the left-hand side, you see an image of one of the MESA structures, and you, maybe there's some uh, pit or a, a scratch there. That's about a 60 by 50 micron field of view, uh, 100x nominal field of view. And uh, it shows some pitting, uh, and you might want to understand better what's happening there. So you look um, at a 3D image, and you can see also maybe one micron kind of tall, one micron wide type bumping. And this is a great example of where, you know, it's one example of where you can use the nano lens capability to go and make a higher resolution image to confirm the nature of, of a defect or to understand more about the sample. So at very high resolution, or relatively high resolution, one can go and make a simple uh, scan. And the beauty of doing this at uh, a low, relatively low AFM resolution as you can really treat this as a true high magnification objective on the 3D microscope and allowing you to make AFM images in a very uh, rapid succession and, and quick time to acquisition for the data. And this is the beauty of thinking of the AFM, nano, the nano lens AFM as an on turret lens is that you can make um, relatively high uh, high resolution for optical scans uh, and a short amount of time to confirm the nature of a, of a bump or a defect. Here you're, we're seeing that we had actually a bump in the location of, of inspection or interest. And this is something that can be useful for a wide range of applications. Now if additionally, if one wanted to make a higher resolution scan, much easier and with the integrated software side by side in the 3D microscope to then zoom to a one by one micron box or a five by five micron box and make a much higher resolution scan to confirm. And in addition to that, um, the NanoLens AFM also supports phase imaging so you can tell whether there is a contaminant on the surface rather than a defect. So that's an additional capability that can be offered with this, this functionality from the NanoLens AFM. And so for the last section, I'd just like to summarize, and then we'll open up for questions in these last uh, few minutes of the presentation. So I briefly introduced uh, Bruker, Bruker Nano Surfaces, and I also talked about the stylus and optical metrology business where I work here in Tucson, Arizona. I spent some time talking about the 3D optical microscopes and their advantages for metrology based specifically on speed and ease of use. Then in the last section of the, the discussion, I spent um, time introducing Bruker's NanoLens AFM, covering the combined capabilities that um, are provided by the 3D optical microscope and the value that this combined NanoLens AFM uh, adds for, for that in terms of a capability for metrology. Then I outlined a, a simple application for an onboard 1000x imaging, uh, just giving a, a simplified defect review example. And at this time, um, we can open up for questions. I will pull that uh, questions dialog up and any unanswered questions 
I will follow up via email. Uh, if you link your email to your company name, I'm happy to, to try and answer the, the questions as quickly as possible following the presentation uh, in the coming days or weeks. So in summary, the final summary, here is my uh, contact email. I'm Matt Novak again, and I'm working here as Applications Development Manager in Bruker Stylus and Optical Metrology. And I want to thank you for your time and open up for questions at this time. <clears throat> And so I am opening up for questions. And let's see. I am trying to open the question dialog. OK. So what is the the first question I apologize for the challenge I'm having a challenge opening the question dialog large enough to to read ah so the what is the max step height that the microscope can, can measure ah so we can measure um, the scan length of the microscope can be up to 10 uh, millimeters so you can measure several millimeter step height with, with very high accuracy. Uh, let's see. Next, there's another question. Um, can we have the presentation for direct download? Yes, um, it, is, it is possible to have this uh, available online. Um, so someone asked if this AFM module only functions uh, the way we have this uh, only functions on the Bruker microscope. The, we have the controller integrated in with our 3D microscope systems, and, and that is how we offer the, the system, yes. Someone is asking if we can get um, also, and the next question is, uh, can we have uh, an accurate color image of a glass with a film on it and then focus at the th with the 3D microscope? Um, we do offer 3D microscopes with color image sensors here from Bruker. Uh, so that one I think I can maybe follow up a little bit further with email. Um, and now let's see. Um, someone asked if you can keep the nano lens attached while the uh, WLI is being used as usual. Uh, the microscope being used as usual, yes, you can. Um, you're able to keep the nano lens in place. Um, what I recommend is keeping the nano lens uh, next to the the turret position that you would use most often, um, and there are some safeties built in so that you the turret does not move easily unless the operator is fully aware of the sample position on the stage and also the clearance challenges that you might expect would come by having such a a package installed on the turret. But yes, the the nano lens is installed and it can work just like another objective. You can move it into place and make measurements just in line with the, the measurement capability on the system. Um, there are some questions about retrofitting to um, legacy systems and that those I can definitely follow up with offline. Uh, they're, they may be possible, but we have to discuss that. Um, there are questions about, uh, oh, okay, resolution limits for, for uh, the, <coughs> excuse me, resolution limits for optical microscopes based on interferometry. Still, the, the optical resolution is primarily, <coughs> primarily dictated by the numerical aperture and the wavelength of the light. 
and that is still true for uh, interference microscopes as well. And um, but you're still able to generally achieve diffraction limited imaging, and our systems uh, with a 115x objective and our specialized acuity XR measurement mode have been demonstrated to show uh, lateral resolutions below 200 nanometers. Uh, I think, can you measure image through a substrate and measure the texture on the back side? Yes, so with this type of a 3D microscope, we offer a capability that's called a through transmissive media objective, which can allow you to make measurements of a top surface and then um, add a compensating material that can uh, allow for a path up to three millimeters through a larger glass substrate and then make measurements of the lower surface. Um, those two things combined with what we call our thick film capability would enable such a measurement. I'm trying to find, there's a question about uh, dynamic force imaging. Uh, so yes, this, this uh, nano lens can do uh, both contact static imaging or also can do dynamic force imaging, which is a, a, like Bruker's tapping mode, which is a, a uh, patented technology for operating the cantilever at just off peak resonance and making measurements of the surface by tapping along and tracking the deflection of the cantilever needed to track the surface very carefully. But this, so yes, this system is capable of making dynamic uh, or a dynamic force or tapping mode measurement. Uh, I think we're about out of time for questions. Um, there are some, there's one other about a table for different comparison between uh, technologies, 3D microscope, AFM, confocal microscope, uh, all of these types of technologies um, and contact stylus. I can certainly also follow up via email with, with information regarding that. Uh, I really appreciate uh, your time today taking part in this presentation and webinar. I hope it was informative and that, again I'd like to just mention if you could please uh, fill out the survey before you uh, sign off. I think it's about a 30 second survey. It may take five, five questions. Uh, I'd really appreciate it and we in Bruker would appreciate it. And again, thank you for your time. Uh, I appreciate it and have a great day.